Yeah. Are we right? Still one minute. Good morning, everyone. It's lovely to see everybody here. We're celebrating St Andrew's Day today, um, which is the name of our church, as you all know, and uh, immediately following uh, our service this morning, we're going to have the opening of our new kitchen. So everybody stay for morning tea, and uh, we'd love to have a chat with you. And it's very nice to welcome um, Tracy and Greg Milne, who have come, and uh, we're very happy to have them with us. This morning, our preacher is the Reverend John Barr. Uh, Welcome, John. And our leader is Sandy Herbert. Thank you, Sandy. Now, I think that uh, we've talked about, I think Open Church Tuesday is on Tuesday. And then on Friday, we have our service our Christmas service for the intellectually disabled adults. Um, They are well attended and New Haven uh, Farm and McCall Gardens come. We've been getting about 40 to 50 guys coming with their carers and it's been a, a really big thing. We're going to have a nativity pageant on Friday. So if you'd like to come and have a look and uh, pop in, that would be really lovely. It'll all, all happen in the auditorium. So that's on Friday. Now on Saturday, there's a mini Christmas fair or a Christmas mini fair. Um, it'll be held here in the front of the church. Um, it's to raise funds uh, for maintenance of the church buildings and for any further information, see Karen. But Karen has a lot of things to sell, and uh, she would really appreciate you talking to her if you've got an interest in that. Now, a big thank you to all the people who have agreed to hold positions of responsibility this year. Uh, we had our AGM for the congregation last Sunday after church. so. If you're on the pastoral leaders team, the church council, you're a rep to presbytery, um, an offering coordinator, someone who looks after the communion, or the flower coordinator, or any other job, we just thank you for stepping up and taking that responsibility. But a special welcome and acknowledgement to new members of the PLT, Bev Stevens and Val Schweinsberg, and also uh, a a new member to the Church Council, Stephanie Meany. So I think everybody should give them a hand. Now, at last week's AGM, uh, we rescinded the decision that was made on the 15th of October to hold as many church services in the church as possible. And the reason that we did that, it it is because the ongoing mould issues in here. And there are some people who are really, really find the mould issues a a big problem to the extent that some won't come when the church is held in here. So a decision was made to resume services alternating between the church and the auditorium. And this gives most people the opportunity to come to church at least a couple of times a month. Um, And we will resume alternating services in the church and the auditorium with the first Sunday and the third Sunday in the church. So next week is the first Sunday of the month. So that will be in here. I got myself all mixed up. I've just sorted it out, standing here. Um, okay, so the next, next Sunday, church will be in here. And the following Sunday, it'll be in the auditorium. Okay. And I think that's... No, there's one more thing. 
Now, the, for the uh, intellectually disabled adults Christmas, uh, we usually buy them a little gift, and this year it's a Christmas comic. And um, so, yeah, they really love these things. Some of them can read, some of them can't, a lot of them can't, but they love to look at the pictures. And so if you would like to contribute anything towards the cost of those, please come and see me later. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. So welcome to our St Andrew's Day and to all, all of you at home. We're glad to share with you because through the streaming we all blend together, don't we? Um, John Barr, our minister today, his email said he'd looked up St Andrew's and so had I. And um, I can't preempt what he's going to say, but I can say that he was a servant and he served um, um, John the Baptist and then he served Jesus. And um, I arrived here about 1990 and I've witnessed some wonderful servants and if I named them all just now, we'd be here for the half hour or an hour. But wonderful servants in our congregation and I can't name them all, but most are in heaven now with our Lord and when I arrived with Warwick in Paget Street, it was Bob and Del Talks who welcomed us. And I know, Bob, you watch on the, uh, on the streaming. So uh, he welcomed us very wonderfully well, and that's why we came. And it then was Mary Avern and Nola Moxie and Enid Kerr. Some of you probably haven't heard those names, but they were the ones that taught me to uh, serve and how to serve in this district. You know, every district's different. Um, of course, we've had uh, a continuation of great servants, Irene and Ian as well, and Betty up the back there, uh, who was in Paget Street as well. Of course, we've had them, and we will continue to serve Richmond and Hawkesbury in the area. So... Um, Jesus, of course, was the, the best of all he showed us. He was the servant king. So we're going to call to worship now. This is the day we celebrate the reign of Christ. Here we lay ourselves before him to rededicate our lives to the one who is the core of our existence. Let us, therefore, worship in the one whom we live and breathe and have our being. Amen. And we're, our band is going to bring us the spring song, the spirit song. Sorry. <laughs> Good morning, St. Andrews. Lovely to see you all this morning. Join us as we sing the Spirit Song. Oh, let the Son of God unfold you with His Spirit and his love let him fill your heart and satisfy your soul oh let him have those things that hold you and his spirit like a dove will descend upon your life and make you whole Jesus, oh Jesus, come and fill your land. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and fill your land. Oh, come and sing this song with gladness 
as your hearts are filled with joy lift your hands in sweet surrender to his name oh give him all your tears and sadness give him all your years of pain and you enter into life in jesus name jesus oh jesus come and fill your lamps jesus oh prayer of adoration. Lord Jesus Christ, who we know is the living word, creator, redeemer, and the bringer of life, may we be lost in your spirit as we seek to honour you with our praise, our adoration, our worship, and our thanksgiving. Amen. And our prayer of confession Gracious God, in the chaos of our busy lives, we confess that we too easily crowd out the whispering presence of your spirit and we lose the sight of the incredible gifts you have given us. We are distracted by our daily routine and seek solace in trivial distractions instead of acknowledging you as Lord of life, seeking to discern your will for us and your world. We follow unfair helpful voices and patterns of behaviour. Forgive us that even though we know the greater truth, yet we fail to obey your commandments. May your forgiveness lead to transformation that your way may be our way. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. In Christ we find true forgiveness through confession and repentance. Eternal and abundant life is given in the name of Christ. I declare our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now on the video we're going to have that wonderful hymn, Crown Him With Many Crowns. You might stand and sing with it. Thank you.
Thank you. Our Bible reading, Kay will bring, and then John will come and do this, the service. Um, and thank you. Good morning. Our Bible reading today is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 to 23, under the heading of Praise for Spiritual Blessings in Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. In order that we who were the first to be put to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal that promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Thanksgiving and prayer. For this reason, Ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy name and his incomparably great power for us who believe. The power is the same as the mighty strength he, he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand side in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion and every name that is invoked not only in the present age but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills everything in every way. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, and good morning. It's lovely to be here, and good morning to those watching online as well. Thank you for putting on a beautiful day. It was a bit gloomy yesterday, wasn't it? But it was beautiful driving down this morning. And it's lovely to be worshipping with you on this special day, St Andrew's Day. Some of you will know that I live in the Upper Mountains. And on a good day... When driving east along the Great Western Highway, just past Wentworth Falls, one can gain a magnificent view down over the Cumberland Plain, towards the sea, with the tower blocks of Parramatta and the CBD clearly in sight. And this morning it was lovely and clear. This is what we might call a big picture view. From a height of nearly a 1,000 metres, and a distance of some 80 kilometres, I am able to look over with one glimpse the incredible vista of a sprawling city of some five million people. And there are many big picture things in life. I remember when I turned 70 a few years ago and faced the reality of retirement from full-time ministry, I found such an occasion more than a one-off birthday. It was a time of looking back over my life at all the things I had done and not done. It was a time of celebration and delight. It was also a time of a few regrets and a little bit of sadness. As life in all its joys and complexity rolled out before me with the marking of seven decades on this earth. Big picture things are important. But so often we seem to get caught up in the details. Our focus is on the immediate. Getting to work on time, 
making those mortgage payments each month, paying the electricity bill by the due date, having the car serviced, remembering the next medical appointment and getting ready for Christmas, which I'm hasten to remind you is less than four weeks away. Here we often cannot see beyond the now as we live from day to day, from week to week or from month to month. But today is different. I wonder how you respond to the Bible reading we have just heard. It's from the letter to the Ephesians and Paul is writing to a community in ancient Ephesus which was an important trading centre in what is now modern day Turkey. I find this quite a mind-blowing passage as Paul gifts us with what I believe to be a big picture of faith. In this passage, Jesus is not just a teacher wandering from village to village in Galilee, not just a healer who reaches out to the poor, or a prophet who calls for justice. Here in this text from Ephesians, Jesus is raised up in an awesome mighty, exalted way to be seated at the right hand of God. In this passage, Jesus rules as sovereign Lord, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named. In this passage, Jesus embodies truth as Paul declares that it is in Christ we have our hope for the present and for the future. In a world that is caught up and, dare I say, obsessed with details, these are mind-blowing claims. No doubt while the Christian community in ancient Ephesus was most likely preoccupied with lots of details, with the pressures of urban life, while they were bogged down with the challenges of paying taxes, caught up in dealing with issues of diversity and needing to face constant hostility from the worshippers of Greek gods. Paul calls on these followers of Jesus to step back for a moment and to put their faith into a broader framework. And here Paul challenges this Christian community to understand that faith in Christ is all about the big things, the really big things of life. It's about truth. It's about hope. It's about what we are called to be and to do in life. It is about what we are destined to become. For you see, faith in Christ is unreservedly and quite definitively about life and death issues. Faith in Christ is about who is ultimately in control. It's about what the future holds. It's about who we can assuredly trust in the midst of the frailty, the vulnerability, the uncertainty and the pressure and complexity of life. And today these things are summed up in the celebration of what the church calls the Feast of Christ the King. We also refer to it as the reign of Christ. It's a way of affirming what Paul declares to the early Christian community in Ephesus, that in Christ we receive the word of truth. In Christ we have our hope. In Christ we have our true identity and being. The feast of Christ the King or the reign of Christ speaks about the big things the things that do underlie who we are as followers of Jesus. But today, we also acknowledge another day. Not just Christ the King, but we also celebrate St Andrew's Day. And I believe the two go together. Christ the King and St Andrew's Day. 
because in Jesus and in Andrew, I believe we are gifted with that big picture of faith. Andrew grew up in the back country of Galilee, in the village of Bethsaida, on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. He fished for a living, but clearly Andrew looked beyond the immediate context of his life to greater things. Andrew was committed to the bigger picture of faith and life as he earnestly sought the Messiah. He became a disciple of John the Baptist. And here Andrew met Jesus and bore witness to him as the Messiah, as the anointed one of God. And because of this, Andrew is considered to be one of the first disciples to be called by Jesus. But it doesn't stop here. Andrew introduces his brother Simon Peter to Jesus. And later in John's Gospel, we see that it is Andrew who introduces to Jesus a young boy carrying five barley loaves and two fishes. And Jesus takes these loaves and fishes and uses them to perform that amazing miracle, which is the feeding of the 5,000. And then Andrew is not to be kept in the shadows. He introduces some inquiring Greeks to Jesus. These were Gentiles, wishing to understand more of Jesus' teaching. So you see, Andrew plays an important, dare I say, big picture role as a disciple of Jesus. In doing so, Andrew identifies who Jesus is as a much-awaited Messiah or King. In doing so, Andrew is committed to following Jesus as his Lord. And while others may have doubted or were simply cautious, Andrew's life is a bold one as it centres on introducing others to our Lord. Friends, as we wrestle with the constant details of life, what better role model is there than Andrew, the disciple who had a vision and had a yearning for the big picture of faith? And what finer inspiration is there for you, a church here in Western Sydney, who bears Andrew's name? Tradition has it that Andrew went on to share the good news of Jesus in and around the area of the Black Sea. Then, some 30 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus, Andrew was detained by the Romans as a troublemaker and he was sentenced to death under the Emperor Nero by crucifixion. But Andrew believed he was not worthy to be crucified in the manner of his Lord. Instead, he was strung up on a X-rated, X-rated, I should say, X-shaped, Goodness, that was a slip, wasn't it? An X-shaped cross. A particularly cruel instrument of execution that led to a slow, agonising death over a period of many days. And we call this the St Andrew's Cross. We might put that up on the screen. It's the next slide. There it is. It's particularly important in our Scottish traditions, as I can see here with the flag on the communion table. But most important, the St Andrew's cross is a potent symbol declaring the big picture of things, the big picture of faith and life, that in Jesus, the crucified, risen Christ, there is truth. In a world where half-truths and fake news dominate our lives, that in Jesus, the ascended Christ, there is hope for a fractured broken world. That in Jesus, the one who is our sovereign Lord, there is the assurance that God will restore, revive and make all things new. And there's one last point. Look at the cross. What do you see? In the St Andrew's cross or the diagonal cross, I see a empty cross. This informs us 
of the big picture truth that we should never forget. That in the empty cross it says that resurrection follows death. That light overcomes darkness. That peace prevails over violence. And that good triumphs over evil. And secondly, when I look at this cross, and maybe you do too, I see the power of the gospel and the immense possibilities there are in following Jesus and being God's people in the world. For you see, in this cross, you can see not just a diagonal, I see a multiplication sign. You know, we put a cross in multiplication in arithmetic. And I think this is a simple, most profound sign that points to the growth of things, to the proliferation of things, to an abundance of things, and the experience of wholeness and joy. And as a consequence, to the restoration and the renewal of individual lives, and indeed of the whole creation. And isn't that what we, as a body of Christ, the people of God, are really on about? Friends, on this feast of Christ the King, and on this day when we celebrate our Saint Andrew, take time, look at this cross, and think about what your faith is and what it means. And in doing so, reflect on who we are as a community of faith. As a community of faith in this place. And do consider carefully what God is calling us all to be and to do in a world that is truly crying out for the good news of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, John, very much. And now we're going to have our band, our wonderful servants here, our band, um, and they're going to play for us Amazing Grace. My chains are gone. So would you like to stand? Lord, have 
has promised good to me his word my hope secures he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace the earth shall soon this song like snow the sun forbears to shine but God who called me here below will be forever mine will be forever you are forever mine. Lovely. Karen's going to come now for prayers for others. Thanks, Karen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, you are the creator of the world and all the life on earth. We know that you have incredible power, but we also know that you listen to our prayers and you're interested in our lives. So because you hear our prayers, we come to you this morning to lift up those who are in need of loving touch. As we look at the state of the world around us with so much destruction and turmoil, we pray for the current situations in Israel in Ukraine, and even in Ireland. Lord, we lift up the conflict in Israel and pray for peace and a lasting ceasefire and a safe exchange of hostages. We pray today for the people of Ukraine and Russia. Please bring peace to this part of the world too. Let the leaders here realize how destructive this war is as it drags on with no obvious resolution. Father, we also hear recently of unrest in Ireland and so we pray for the people in this part of the world too as they struggle with unrest. Lord, closer to home in Australia, we pray for our own people who are finding life hard. More and more people, even in our local area, are struggling to afford food, rent and necessities. Those who do their best to help are being overwhelmed with increase of not just homeless, but of the working poor who now seek assistance too. So, Lord, please, please strengthen and empower these agencies as they are under pressure. Father, we pray for the leadership of Australia. Please give our government wisdom to address issues such as homelessness, poverty, hospital wait times, rising cost of necessities and youth crime. May our leaders serve the people with genuine care and compassion. Inspire them always to seek the common good and may, be the, may they be your instruments of bringing peace, justice and harmony to our society. Father God, please be with members of our own congregation who are not well. Bring healing to those who are sick, strengthen those who are feeling weak or vulnerable and walk along, alongside those who are struggling. In the quiet, we lift up those known to us who need your healing touch now. 
Father, we also give thanks for our church community. We are so grateful for faithful members of this congregation who have left a solid foundation for so many years. We pray that we are able to continue to serve you and each other in the Hawkesbury. We particularly give thanks for the lives of Ian and Irene Milne, and we remember them even as we find little things that Ian has made for the church or when we remember things that Irene would have said or done at church. Thank you for these faithful servants. And so, Lord, as we head into another week, we give thanks for the many blessings that you give and the prayers that you answer. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer, which can be found in the back cover of the Red Hymn Book. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thanks, Karen. Our next uh, hymn on the screen is The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. Lovely old one. So we just stand and sing that one too. Thank you. Let us make a respond as Christ's disciples in making our offering. The offering will now take place. Thank you.
receive the gifts, we pray. They are tokens of our love for you, Lord, and our desire to serve you and alone. Amen. And now we've got the band are going to sing Christ is Enough. Thank you, band. Yeah, please stand as we sing our final song. Christ is Enough. with 
nothing I need is in you Everything I need I have decided to follow Jesus No turning back No turning back I have decided to follow Jesus No turning back No turning back The cross before me The world behind me No turning back No turning back The cross before me the world behind me no turning back 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 Christ God is incarnate, incarnate, sorry, the Lord of creation and the gift of salvation. As we have been immersed in his spirit, so do we go from this place to serve his name. And may we serve without question through the love of God. May we live justly through the teachings of Jesus, the word made flesh. And may we exercise the gifts of the Holy Spirit to extend Christ's reign in every place. Amen. Please join with us for the morning tea and the dedication of the new, Christ, uh, the new kitchen. We have Greg and Tracy here, of course, and Irene's best friend, Betty Dixon, to cut the cake. I'm sorry, all of you at home, we can't give you a piece of cake, so I hope you've got something nice to nibble out of the pantry. And we thank you all and thank you... John, for your words of encouragement. Thank you. Thank you. And I've been asked by many people at home, could you just turn around and give them all a wave, please? Thank you.